Okay, Itamex is to go good day. It is about quarter after two o'clock in the afternoon of Friday, November 22nd, 2019, anniversary of a very famous execution. I'm sure many of you are aware of this. <laughs> we are in the very tail end of the lunar cycle, Itots, to you when cold arrives. So we're going to be entering into our second winter lunar cycle pretty soon. Uh, this morning I woke up and began my day as usual with a quick round at Shpobikimi where I found the waters of the pond are completely frozen over. The river wasn't quite as frozen but it's getting there. Like the edges are freezing in and it's pretty much a, a sea of slush right now moving downstream on top of the on top of the water. So we are going to enter into the lunar cycle when when the rivers entirely freeze over and that is of concern to me in regard to the beaver situation that I'm dealing with upstream a little ways. Anyway, during my walk at the pond, I had a um, I ended up on a deer trail and just followed that trail for a while. Uh, I noticed that the trail for most of its length that I followed through the forest main, it was running parallel to the human trail. And it got me, I wonder, I was wondering, why don't they just walk on, you know, the op more open human trail? Do they not like the openness? And I don't think that's what it is. I, I think it just makes sense, really, when you, when you consider it. It makes sense that an animal, uh, a, a prey animal, might not want to follow the trail of its predator, you know? <laughs> because if you're on the trail of a, of a particular species, you know, there are going to be uh, higher odds that you're going to encounter that species, right? And so a deer doesn't want to encounter a human, of course, so it makes sense that it kept its own its own way to go, even if it was very close, parallel to the to where we would walk. I did run into the deer eventually following this trail and when I first came upon him I heard I saw the deer and then I heard a little bit of clacking and I noted that the, you know there was two males there with their heads down two bucks they were kind of just they weren't really going at it but they were just starting to and they're still in their rut you know so they were just competing a little bit one buck was quite a bit larger than the other and they were too busy to, to really notice me, but there was this doe nearby that did. She took off and that gave them alarm. And then uh, they never did. I was hoping to get a fight scene, but they never did get back to it. Uh, they, they were alerted to me by the doe. And then, you know, from there they eventually took off. Anyhow, I stopped in after that at the studio uh, to open things up and make sure everything was going for the day. This is the second day of their sales at the studio and um, while I was there, you know, we didn't have any customers around. There was a bit of uh, play with the, some of the indigenous games. Yeah, you gotta have a really good eye to catch yeah. that, hey? Ooh. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, yet? Barry. Nobody's caught it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, last one I catch it loses. Oh, that was close. You have to pass it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to throwing out the chest, but please, I can't. Oh, okay. Playing a game of drop. <laughs> After, you know, hanging out at the studio for a bit this morning, I went to go test my grappling hook. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately the little ring that I bought to attach my chain to my grappling hook wasn't quite wide enough to go around the grappling hook in particular. 
uh, the opening wasn't quite wide enough to go around it, the little carabiner type of thing that I had. So um, I've used a master lock that I keep in the vehicle with my gym strip for if I'm going to the gym. So that'll work. Got it tied off to a rope at the other end. And we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna give it a throw here. See how it does. <laughs> uh, the first throw out there, it was ridiculous. It was like watching that YouTube video where the the German guy, uh, you know, tries to dive into this pool <laughs> that's iced over, and he just sort of splat, you know, on the ice. Um, that's how my grappling hook was, which just went streaking across the ice. Then I figured, well, if I if I throw it high, it'll come down, you know, with more strength and go through the ice. And eventually it did. Problem was, then I had a tine of the grappling hook hooked under the ice, and um, and it wouldn't come free. Because <laughs> you know, as I'm pulling the grappling hook, I'm pulling the tines toward me, and so it's it's underneath the ice. The other tines are over the ice, and I, I had a really difficult. Uh, job getting that thing out of there. I ended up like throwing boulders out there into the river or out there into the pool trying to like break the ice around the grappling hook. Um, eventually, eventually I was able to tug it free, but you know, now I know, all right, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work for me when there's ice on the water. Hopefully tomorrow that ice will be gone because of the, because of the over, you know, above zero temperatures right now but no telling um, if it's not gone I need to think of a plan B before that ice gets much more solid so we'll see what we'll see what goes on there um, right now I am on my way to Heritage Point in Mahoney's neighborhood although I mustn't be seen uh, passing by the house or I might have the police called on me for harassment again but at Heritage Point, I have some work to do. There's a trap, a raccoon trap that I have had set up for a good, probably month or more over there. Um, it's been failing, failing, but the raccoon is still there. And uh, not that he's escaped or anything, he just hasn't been going in there, but the, the guy just called me. It's late in the day for a call, but he must have just noticed because that trap's been there so long, he's probably got a little lazy in checking it. Um, there's an animal in there. It's kind of bedded down. He can't tell what it is. He says it's gray. It probably is the raccoon, so I'm gonna go grab it up. I had a, another call from Heritage Point from somebody, but they we, we were just swapped phone calls and it was in regard to a raccoon, so I know there's been one around that, that section of the neighborhood still. So we'll see. Maybe it's a raccoon. Could always be a porcupine. But we'll pick that guy up and head back to the studio again. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. That was a quick trip. Yeah, I just... down by Canadian Tire, so... What's that? Little video recorder. It's a what? Little video recorder. Oh, I like. I got, I got a, a YouTube channel where I put all my animal relocation oh, videos awesome. and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I was going to put up Christmas lights. I came around it. <laughs> there's definitely something in there. Oh yes, it's a raccoon. Is it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. He, he looked nice and comfortable. I couldn't see his face though. So. Oh, there's no handle on here anymore. That's going to be interesting. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hello. Well, there used to be a handle on there. Yeah, there was. Now, that's going to be interesting to move. Okay, I'm going to need a... Well, no, I, I can put it up like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's safe for me. Hey, ready to get out? <laughs> He's a good size. Yeah, I had uh, one of your neighbors. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were playing phone tag, but had reported a uh, big raccoon around the... Yeah, hey. It's over here, yeah. I actually, I was going to move the trap up there. Oh. Uh, uh, just leave it alone for a while and see what happens. Yeah, finally got him. Nice guy. I've seen 
them when they get mad. Oh yeah. Yeah, he. But usually, even just transporting them like that, yeah. they'll growl and. Oh yeah. Get all upset at me. This one seems pretty docile. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, Actually, you ready to move? Friendly. <laughs> yeah, might even know me. <laughs> <laughs> Take them further away. Yeah. All right. Hey, hey. Are you uh really tame tight. or what? Eh? Yeah. Interesting. You know, I never did learn the ultimate disposition of the raccoon called Anya, the little pup who at the beginning of the season was blind and uh, I took care of her for a while, Mahoney took care of her for a while. Uh, ultimately, I know Mahoney had to um, do something with her. She either passed her on or released her or something, but uh, uh, she had received warning that she couldn't have the raccoon at the house. And so um, when I pick up raccoons and they act at all, at all tame, I always wonder in the, in the city, I always wonder, is this Anya? Is this Anya? <laughs> Who knows? This one wasn't acting really tame, but, um, but she wasn't, you know, growling and hissing and stuff like usual. So I've brought the trap back to my shed. I have released the raccoon in... Uh, an undisclosed location uh, where I think she will find a way, find a place to get by. I, you know, these are urban animals and such. Um, a place that's far from heritage, but close to home for me. And yeah, so that's that story. Not so mysterious. Raccoon and uh, the end of about a month long case of trying to get that particular animal into a trap. Now, back to the studio once again. It's the progress on Charmaine's belt. Are you gonna you gonna paint the other stars another color? Oh, ho, black. And then what are you, are you going to paint the in-between at all? Or are you yeah, going to paint it white. You're going to paint it white? Awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> Charles's. It's coming along. Really? Yeah, I mean, yours is good, so mine is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're recording. Just a little bit. <laughs> it's nice. It's coming along. Like this one here, I call it Graham. Wow. Awesome. Oh, yes. Oh my god, that looks so awesome. Love it. I got the beveling really awesome. Look at that. Des, look at that. That's wicked. Beautiful. I'm going to do the whole thing, then I'll be ready to paint. Because I got a little more detail. Make it a little more, you know. Oh. And then I'll come walking out from the back and I'll have a championship. This guy's quietly making a masterpiece over here. This guy over here is just too talented. Yeah, look at that. The whole the whole background has been kind of like, what do you call that? When you, uh, when you make it all marbled like that? He's so talented. We have to make fire him. Make the come out. Yeah. Come out more. He's so talented. We have to fire him. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take all the profits. <laughs> oh, is it? That's what I'm here for. Right on.